Hi everyone, uh, Tanya Cochran here, computer instructor. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to see a lot of you in class uh, these last few months due to the pandemic. Looking forward to an opportunity to meet up with you again soon. But in the meantime, I wanna do a few videos just to kinda give you some information uh, while we're waiting for classes to resume again. So uh, today's video has to do with uh, purchasing a new cell phone. So this time of year, which is August, September timeframe, is one of the best times of the year to purchase a new phone because there's a lot of back to school sales. The other time of the year is the Black Friday, Boxing Day uh, season. So if you're not ready quite yet, uh, then you can wait for those sales to roll, uh, roll around. So when purchasing a new cell phone, there's a bunch of different things to consider. So I'm gonna give you some uh, different tips. You may wanna grab a pen and paper, maybe a favorite beverage, and uh, jot down some of my suggestions. So here we go. Before I start with tip number one, I just wanted to make a comment that uh, when we're purchasing, purchasing a cell phone, we want to make sure that we are looking at phones that are within our budget, uh, but also match what we're going to be using it for. So I often have a lot of my participants coming and asking me um, for help with their cell phone. They've purchased something uh, perhaps very expensive and it does way more than what they really need. So. Um, Part of what you're going to be looking for when you're researching a phone is, uh, does it have the features that I personally need? Um, so that's really important. And some of these tips are really gonna help you determine maybe what you need, uh, as well as how much you really wanna spend. So the first tip has to do with uh, looking at the different brand and the different operating system uh, that are on these phones. So this actually directly impacts price. So it's really important to understand it. Uh, the brand, as you know, with other things like cars and clothing um, and um, uh, a variety of different consumer products, sometimes brand really drives the price up. So an example of that is, of course, the Apple iPhones. Uh, Apple tends to have a very well-known brand. Everybody knows what an iPhone is. And so they tend to charge, in my opinion, more for uh, purchasing that name brand. Another a good example, of course, is Samsung. Most people have heard of Samsung phones, uh, perhaps Google phones, LG. And so um, because these, name, these brand names have um, really done a good marketing uh, job, they c tend to uh, charge more for their phones. Along with the brand, you also have to look at the operating system. So the operating system is um, the stuff that we don't really see on our phone, but it's the uh, technology that runs the phone. And so there are a few um, main ones. So the different operating systems that you're going to see, of course, is the i operating system, the iOS, which is on all the Apple iPhones. There is Android, which is on a lot of different manufacturers' phones, so Samsung, LG, uh, Nokia. Um, uh, there's a bunch of different ones that, um, that use Android. There's BlackBerry operating system, and as well, there is an actually, there is a Windows uh, operating system for phones as well. So I usually recommend um, taking look, a look at the Android or the iPhone operating system. Uh, those tend to be the most common, so you are going to find a uh, lot more help with those particular operating systems. You may wanna consider what operating system your kids use or whoever is going to be assisting you with your phone. Uh, it is a lot easier when you call them up and say that you're having trouble with your phone. If you have the same operating system as they have, uh, that makes it a little bit easier. But do keep in mind that the Apple iPhones, uh, which have their own operating system, tend to be a little bit more expensive. Android, you can get a much cheaper phone. Um, and it is a very good and very common uh, operating system. So you're not getting something that's um, really cheap or obscure. 
Uh, so that has to do with brand and the operating system. My next tip has to do with storage on the phone, and this is a really important one because it uh, it, it does impact price, uh, but it also impacts your use of your cell phone. So generally speaking, when you're purchasing a cell phone, you're going to see storage space on your phone uh, that range anywhere from eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, 64 gig gigabytes, and there are a few different models um, that have larger storage space than that, but those are kind of the common ones. You will notice that those with an eight gigabyte, which is the smallest amount of storage space, are the cheapest by far. 16, a little bit more expensive, 32, more expensive still, and so on. What I usually recommend to my participants is don't always go with the smallest one. Even if you are a beginner, you will find that the eight gigabyte phone will probably get used up quite quickly. Even if you're not doing a lot of things like uh, installing tons and tons of apps or uh, taking lots of pictures or lots of video, uh, the eight gigabyte really is quite um, a small amount of storage. And aside from using the pre-installed apps, there's not a lot that you can add to it. Um, so even though it's advertised as having eight gigabytes of storage, which may seem like a lot, uh, keep in mind that they've installed the operating system, so that takes away some of your storage space. They've installed some basic apps to kind of get you up and running, like a calendar and a camera app and, and um, a browser and those types of things. And so that all takes away from your storage space. So it's, even though they're advertising it as an eight gigabyte phone, that's not what you as a consumer have to work with. Um, so I usually recommend to my participants uh, minimum 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes is great if you can um, find something within your budget. The camera may not be the first thing that you think of as far as a feature that's needed on your new cell phone. A lot of my participants uh, have their own digital cameras that they use to capture uh, different situations. However, the more comfortable you become with your cell phone, you may find you use, that you're using your camera more and more often, especially when you're out and about and a picture opportunity presents itself. It's nice to be able to have a fairly good camera on your phone to be able to capture those impromptu memories. So when we're looking at the specifications of the different cell phones, when it comes to the camera, we're looking at megapixels. It's a uh, the, the letters MP beside a number, and that indicates um, the camera quality. It gives you a clue as to camera quality. So on a phone, we have two cameras, actually. We have a rear-facing or a selfie camera. Uh, that's the one that I'm using right now to film this. And then we have one, a forward-facing camera that we would use day-to-day uh, -to, -day to take pictures of a variety of different situations. So Usually I would say the camera that is forward facing is going to have a higher number of megapixels. It's going to be a higher quality. Uh, we don't really, we're not as concerned about selfie camera quality. And so that is usually a lower number uh, than the forward facing. So you could be looking at something like a selfie camera that is uh, five megapixels perhaps. And then a forward facing could be uh, really anywhere from um, 10, 12, 16, uh, or even higher megapixels. I have seen a few cameras uh, on cell phones now that are much higher, uh, surprisingly, and they have a lot of other uh, fancy features as well, having more than one lens um, and uh, some different flash capabilities and so on. So they will certainly um, uh, list those in the specification. So if camera quality is super important to you, then you may want to consider multiple lenses and the highest uh, megapixel that you can get for your budget. My last tip has to do with battery. So 
if you're deciding between two different cell phones, take a peek at the battery quality and what specification the manufacturer has listed as far as the quality. What you're looking for is a number uh, with the units beside it, MAH, and that stands for milliamp hours. And so typically this number is going to be around maybe 2200, maybe 3250, um, maybe even higher than that, 3600 milliamp hours. And that has to do with the quality of the battery. The higher the number, the better. And so what's gonna happen then is your battery is gonna last longer in between charges and perhaps even have, or have a longer battery life. So um, I do encourage you to try and get a really good battery. That's gonna make your phone uh, more reliable and you won't have to feel like you're plugging it in all the time. So those are the last of my tips for uh, purchasing a cell phone. As you can see, um, some of them do have a big impact on price. You may notice that, but hopefully that helps to guide you in the right direction. The other thing you're gonna have to consider is what type of plan to get with your cell phone. Um, so that's uh, for another day, for another video, and hope you will join me again for that. And I'm looking forward to having class with you again where I can uh, talk to you about cell Cell phones. We have a number of different cell phone classes where we talk about the stuff that um, from this video, but lots of other tips and tricks when using your cell phone and when purchasing a new one. Have a great day. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.